Hey guys, how are you doing? Hopefully we are live on YouTube. Um, just waiting for that to set up there. So um, I'm really, really excited this morning to talk about the reboot of Cultivate. So um, if you missed it the first time around, Cultivate is a course that we put out, I think in 2018, um, that's all about really finding a business opportunity that suits you, um, marketing, whatever it is you're interested in doing at the moment or that you're hoping to do. The idea of Cultivate is really getting people interested. It's like, first of all, putting out your idea there, figuring out how to put it out there in a way that people will be interested in and then reaching those people and showing them your ideas. Um, Hi Lance, sorry, I'm just letting people uh, come and join the YouTube. I hope everyone is doing really well this morning. Um, I know we're all enjoying the quarantine life. I had to laugh this morning. I was trying to do uh, an Instacart from um, Vons, our local supermarket. And they said, we are out of bottled water and they auto suggested White Claw. So I'm like, okay, um, they know me. <laughs> I, I did wonder if there was like some genius marketing going on there on, on behalf of White Claw. Um, yeah, so we do actually have a recorded intro to Cultivate, um, but it was kind of long and it seemed a little bit dated to me. So I thought it would be cool to just kind of do a, a live conversation about what Cultivate is, um, what I plan to do now. Um, and kind of do a shortened version of the original introduction that we had to Cultivate. So let me get on and I'm going to share my screen to start with. And what I'd like to do to start with, uh, if I can find the right button, is I would like to talk about um, this article from Forbes. Um, just kind of while we're waiting for everyone to join in and uh, check in here. So. Forbes posted this article, and this is actually a few years ago, um, and it was called The Top Skills Every Entrepreneur Needs. And it's funny because I was kind of revisiting this and uh, looking back over it. Oh, OK. Barbara says, I'm curious whether this is the same Cultivate you bought and what's different in the free course. So, um, yeah, what we're, we're planning to do. So Isaac and I have basically been going back and looking at our kind of back catalog and looking at what videos might be helpful to people at the current time. So if you've, I, I know Barbara, you're in our KDP group. So we've actually just been posting um, some of the Photoshop videos from our T-shirt revolutionaries course. Uh, and we've been putting those in the KDP group and on this channel in YouTube. Um, and what we're gonna do is do the same thing with Cultivate. So we're not necessarily going to post all the videos, but instead we're going to look at the ones which are most relevant, most helpful, because um, Cultivate actually ran over a whole month. And I think it's like 14, 15 different classes, actually maybe more. So there's a lot of hours of content in Cultivate. So what we're going to do is pull out some highlights from it, and we're going to be posting those to YouTube and talking about them in the group. Um, we're not specifically going to change anything. We're probably going to be posting the videos as is. But what I do want to do is obviously I'm, I'm sort of talking to you live now. And I hope to do um, maybe at least one live Zoom in the Facebook group um, so we can kind of do a group chat. And I'd like to do that. I know you're familiar with Cultivate already, but I'd like to do that on the topic of expertise worksheets which I'll be talking about in a moment. Um, okay, so let's go back to this uh, Forbes article here. And yeah, it's called the top skills every entrepreneur needs. And I think what really struck me when I was looking at this again and kind of revisiting this is just how relevant these skills are right now when we're in the middle of just a huge amount of uncertainty. Um, people's businesses are kind of rocking at the moment as we try and figure out what's happening with the economy, what's happening with Amazon, uh, what's happening with like the postal services. Pretty much everyone right now is kind of facing a tilt, whether you're an FBA seller, um, whether you're a merch seller, merch have just said they're not printing at the moment. 
KDP still seems to be doing okay. I know some people are saying there are shipping delays. There's still review delays. Those have been going on since February. Um, but for now, it looks like KDP are actually doing okay. I went and checked on some of my books. They still said they're shipping in two days. So they seem to be hanging in there pretty well at the moment. But for many of us, whatever business you're in, you're probably experiencing a bit of a sort of tilt at the moment. And we're trying to sort of figure out like where everything's gonna come down, where the chips are gonna fall down and what we're gonna do in the future. So I thought it was pretty interesting to look at this list again, um, because these skills, like these were skills I talked about back when there wasn't a tilt, when things were kind of normal. Um, now looking at them, they seem even more relevant. So these are the skills that Forbes suggests. First of all, resiliency. Oh my gosh, the ability to weather the ups and downs of any business since it never goes exactly the way the business plan described it. Um, you know, I think really this is saying when there are bad times, when things get tough, stick with it, stick with your goal, um, keep your mindset and yourself just as solid as you can be. Um, I really think mindset is, such a big part of entrepreneurialism. And I don't mean that in a sort of airy fairy kind of, oh, let's all mm, positive thinking. I mean, I find when I've got enough sleep, when I'm well exercised, well fed, um, just in a good frame of mind, I can make much clearer decisions and things don't feel overwhelming. When you start losing sleep, you start um, feeling cooped in, you're not getting enough social interaction. It's actually really hard to be creative and to, um, feel like you can cope with things so look after yourselves especially now especially now please look after yourselves keep your mindset positive and do whatever it takes to keep your brain in a good position and i know that's hard when you're worried about like food supplies or just the kids being home whatever it is try and maintain your mindset and your well-being as as far as you can focus Oh my gosh, knowing how to laser focus is the ultimate goal. Now, this one's hard at the moment because things are changing. Things are distracting. And there are a lot of distractions right now. Um, staying focused on a goal, it can help. But I would say at this point, sometimes there's time to pull back a little bit and to reevaluate. So focus on your goals. But I would add to this, also know when it's time to reevaluate, when it's time to actually say, okay, what are my goals? What am I focused on? Is this the right thing to focus on right now? So you might want to look at things and say, well, I mean, obviously, for example, if your goal was to make like 50 merch shirts a day and you can't currently do that, then it might be time to reevaluate that goal. Um, but focus, like knowing where you want to be, knowing where you want to get to, um, that can be enough to just keep you going and to give you your why, like why, why am I in this business? Like, why am I not just sort of looking for a regular job? Why do I want to work for myself? Stay, staying focused can keep you on task with that. And that kind of goes back to resiliency and mindset too. Along with that, invest for the long term. Think about the long term. Um, and this is so key to cultivate. So a lot of cultivate is about audience building. It's about creating a community. It's about building a brand that people like, that people trust, that you feel proud of, that you feel good about. And a lot of that comes with the long term. Um, it's very easy, especially in e-commerce, uh, especially in marketing, to go for the get rich quick. Um, and we actually have a video about gamification in Cultivate, which is one of my favorite videos. I love that video. Um, and a lot of people think, well, like, what's gamification got to do with marketing, with making products? I think gamification is huge. I think it's a huge part of human psychology. Um, it's an important part of business. It's an important part of marketing. Um, but there's some, re some really interesting models in gamification that look at black hat games or white hat games. And like black hat games can be very effective and quick, um, but they can also just be very bad for you. And um, and so things here are things like scarcity marketing, like buy it now, time's running out, like anything that puts pressure on people. I'm not really a fan of putting pressure on people. I, I'm kind of a fan of, and a lot of people call it inbound marketing. Um, and in the original Cultivate introduction, I talked a lot about inbound marketing. 
Um, and actually, let me just switch over to that because I have a little slide that I can share about inbound marketing. Um, let me see where my slides are. Uh, there it is. Okay. Um, this one. Okay, so inbound marketing is the process of attracting the attention of prospects via content creation before they're even ready to buy. It's one of the best and most cost-effective ways to convert strangers into customers and promoters of your business. So I kind of see inbound marketing or content marketing as a very white hat, positive way of putting yourself out there, putting your brand out there, putting your products out there. Um, inbound marketing is really about creating content, creating helpful things for people, um, just getting yourself known as knowing what you're talking about, um, having useful, um, valuable information and not ripping people off. Um, I think black hat marketing is when you're kind of pressuring people into buying. You're saying, OK, we're, we're running out. You've got to buy it now. Buy now. Um, hurry, hurry, hurry. People often feel rushed into a decision. They may not feel good about that decision. And then especially when people couple that with things like not giving refunds and stuff like that, it can lead to very bad feeling about your brand. And I really feel like your brand, your reputation is everything. So inbound marketing is really a way of promoting your reputation, putting out good content, good information, letting people like you, trust you, um, and understand and enjoy your content. And we're gonna be talking a lot in the videos that I'm gonna be posting. Um, we have a lot about how to create awesome content, uh, how to put information out there in a way that people will really enjoy it and that they will respect you for that. So let me switch back to the Forbes article. Um, there it is, okay. Um, so we're on invest for the long term. So I think white hat marketing, content marketing, inbound marketing, very much key for the long term. The next one's an interesting one, find and manage people. And this is like, this one's making me think a lot, especially in the current time, because the thing that's really been cut off from us is people, at least in the real world. And I kind of find that bad for my mindset. I like people around me. I like creating with people. Um, I enjoy being with people. That's why I like sort of theater and improv and things like that, because I love sort of being in a space with people with their energy. Um, however, I, I think we have something amazing right now in that we have Zoom, we have YouTube, uh, we have all of these things. Um, and also I wanna say, that there are people out there that you can work with. There are things like Upwork, um, there's like online jobs, there's various um, different places where you can actually go and outsource work. You can find VAs, you can work with people. Um, am I still live? I hope I am. I see, it looks like it's refreshing on my screen, but I'm just gonna refresh that and make sure we are still good. Okay, it looks, it looks good. Um, if you see any problems with the with the the feed, uh, please either just refresh or let me know if you see any issues going on there. Um, so finding and managing people, um, yeah, th this is a really interesting one. I think networking is and knowing how to network and when to network um, can be very valuable. Um, I am not personally a fan of affiliate marketing. I know that's like a really big option and it's kind of an easy option. If, if you have a product and you want to get people to sell it, you can just reach out to affiliate marketers. There's a lot of places where you can go to find affiliate marketers. It's not something I really like to do. Um, there's a few reasons why. Um, one is I really like my customers to know exactly what I do and to hear it from me. Um, I find that leads to um, people not being confused, knowing exactly what they're buying. Um, I, I've seen affiliates really overstate products and benefits and things like that because they're so anxious to get the sell. Um, th there's a few other issues. I think also it can lead to you not feeling very trustworthy if you rely a lot on um, affiliates. Like people like to hear from you. So for me, that's, that's not really an option I go with. It is an option. It is out there. There are benefits to it. Um, but yeah, there, there are other ways of working with people and finding sort of mutually uh, good ways of working with people. And I think things like uh, Upwork, outsourcing can also be very valuable if you kind of 
make good decisions and you employ people and know exactly what you're doing with them. Um, you don't have to do all the work yourself. You can hire people on outsourcing websites um, very affordably. So that is an option, especially now, especially when we're sort of penned in like this. Um, Okay, number five, this is a big one. And I've taught some classes on creativity and profitable creativity. And the first skill I said you need, the first thing to do when you're being creative in a profitable way is to sell something, just sell something. Um, every entrepreneur is a salesperson, whether they want to be or not. If you want to make money at the moment, the, the <laughs> I'm reading Jan's thing, don't try to help a friend. By paying them to do something they are not trained in, it will be a problem and strain your friendship. Yeah, um, be careful with working with friends can be very challenging sometimes. Um, yeah, sales is a tough one because I, I, I've seen this consistently working with FBA sellers, working with KDP sellers. People panic if you say marketing. They say sales, marketing, they're like, no, I don't want to sell things. I hate selling. Ah, um, and sales have sometimes got a bad name, especially from things like MLM, um, when it's like sell to your friends. Um, I, I think selling can be a really positive thing. If you have an awesome product, you know that what you're doing is helping people, you know that what you're doing is valuable, then selling can be really positive. Like people will want to buy from you and you'll be really happy to sell to them because you'll be proud of your product and proud of your brand. Um, so hopefully that's something that, that Cultivate can really, really help you with that, of having something that you are proud to sell and feel good about selling. And again, I'm all about selling in a very white hat way, in a very like positive way, not high pressure, not stress, um, just put good stuff out there and let people come to you. So we're going to talk a lot about that in the videos in Cultivate learning oh my gosh i think this is my favorite one just keep learning learn everything um and you know the thing i feel um a little differently about is i know a lot of people read business books they say go read business books go read entrepreneur books um i i, I think a lot of them if it starts feeling after a while when you start reading a lot of business books they kind of feel like they're repackaging the same stuff quite often and what i find is if i go and just learn from weird places like if I just get interested in like I, I don't know like the other day I was reading some like article on Roland Barthes and photography and like it, it can just change how you think about things like read from a wide variety of places read anything that catches your eye just get curious like I think a lot of learning is just curiosity like go explore some new like type of art that you've never looked at before go and learn about a new technology. Like I get so excited when I find a new website or a new tool um, that does something really interesting, especially when it involves things like data, or public domain. I get really excited about stuff like that. I just wanna learn more and get curious. Um, and what you sometimes find if you learn something obscure or that's old or vintage or uh, how no one's talking about at the moment, you might find something really valuable that you can share with other people. Because like, if it gets you interested, if you find something that you go, wow, I never knew that was possible. Well, this is cool. Um, you can teach other people to do that and they'll think it's cool too. Like things like um, Google Correlate. Now, sadly that is no more, which is probably a bad example. Um, but I mean, like I, I, I discovered Google Correlate and I was just like, this is so cool. People need to play with stuff like this and find things like this. But it doesn't get talked about a lot because it, it, I don't know, it didn't have a great interface, or it wasn't that sexy, but there are some really cool things out there and you can be the one to discover them and pioneer them. Okay, number seven, self-reflection. Yeah, and this is, I think maybe there's a lot of self-reflection going on at the moment. Um, I would say use time to reflect, but don't get in a spiral. Don't get in a crazy like spiral of, oh my gosh, am I doing the right thing? And I think, and this is something I don't, I haven't really heard people talking about, but I feel like when we're stuck at home, it can actually get more overwhelming because you can't really escape Zoom. Like people are having meetings now in your living room. So it gets hard. You can't really find an excuse where people know you're stuck at home, you're, <laughs> you're there on Zoom. So I would say spend time self-reflecting, looking at yourself and the expertise worksheet, which we're gonna talk about in a moment will help with that. Um, but don't get overwhelmed with the Zoom life and the quarantine life. 
Um, and then lastly, self-reliance. And, you know, I feel like this pulls all the other things in together. Being self-reliant is probably the most powerful thing you can do. And it sounds scary, I know. And I think especially um, maybe for women, we, we sometimes have this sort of sense of like, oh, this is overwhelming. Don't I do enough already? Um, but, you know, self-reliance kind of includes all these other things. Getting knowledgeable, learning as much as you can, being curious, knowing how to hire people. If you don't know how to do something, figure out how to get it done. If you want to do something, you don't know how to do it, figure out what you need to do to get that done. Maybe you need to buy it from somewhere. Maybe you need to outsource to someone um, and hire someone. Again, there's places like Upwork, there's BAs out there. Um, but be self-reliant, know how to sell. Don't be afraid of selling. Don't be afraid of learning. Like invest as much as you can in yourself and in your skills. So there we go. This is, as I say, this is a, a short article from Forbes, top skills every entrepreneur needs. It's an old article, but I think it's still incredibly valuable. Um, and hopefully that's kind of a good um, intro to just my sort of mindset around business and being an entrepreneur. Okay, so let's jump into the good stuff and talk a little bit um, about Cultivate specifically. So the first thing I would like to talk about is the expertise worksheet. And this is such a simple tool. So we've put um, the expertise worksheet, it is online and everyone can now access it. So let me um, share that link. I'm gonna post that in the chat right now. Um, so hopefully you can reach that and we'll be adding the link to YouTube as well. Now, the expertise worksheet is kind of the most empowering tool um, that I found in, in, in what we've done, um, because it's really all about self-reflection. It's about looking at yourself and your capabilities, what you've done. And the way we do that is we do it in a very um, tangible way by looking at problems. What problems have you solved? And I think this is one of those things where you go, whoa, I've done a lot of stuff. So what we do is with the expertise worksheet, there were three columns. We have problems that we have solved in the past, problems that we're currently working on, and problems that you would like to solve one day in the future, the near future. Um, and we divided those down into different categories. So you have home and family, business, professional or specialist, hobbies, spiritual health and self-improvement, local knowledge. And I have like a little demo one here that uh, I, I created a couple of years ago. It's kind of funny actually looking um, back at this and, and, and seeing which things I did and which um, things I haven't yet. Um, but these were some of the problems that I looked at and said, well, I think I've solved these. Like I figured out how to homeschool in California. Um, I survived divorce. So I figured out how to survive a divorce, um, how to save time by cooking in a crock pot or an instant pot. Actually, I, I upgraded after this to an instant pot. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but you know, it saves time. Um, I've solved problems like how to sell on Amazon and eBay. I've solved problems like how to create an online course, how to make a Facebook advert, how to publish a book. Um, I, I've written a song, I've written a play, I've performed at a festival. These are my hobbies. Um, I've collected perfume. Um, I've sung in front of people. Um, I've planned a wedding. I created a welcoming ceremony for a baby. Like these aren't big things. These aren't earth shattering things. I'm not gonna get a PhD in like planning a wedding. I, I mean, I just did one once. I, I planned my wedding on the beach, um, but something about what you did was unique to you. Like you did it in your way. You solved that problem. It was workable and it can be anything. It can be like, did you make the perfect roast chicken? Do you know how to make a gluten-free cake? Um, well, Steve Jan says you're so talented. No, I'm not talented. I just like, the thing is these aren't necessarily things I did amazingly well. Oh, my dog's here. <laughs> um, how, to, how to do a Zoom when you've got a Labrador. There you go, that's, that's a problem um, solved. Um, but these aren't necessarily things you're like the best person at in the world. They're just problems you have solved at some point and you solve them in your way. Um, 
And again, these can be really simple things. Like they can be something as simple as, I don't know, maybe you figured out how to fix something in your car or you managed to send an email to the president of a big company and they got a, and you got a response from them. It can be something really small or really simple. Um, so it, it doesn't have to be a big complicated thing, but put down the problems you have solved there, like all of them, just brainstorm, think about everything that you've done and just go through those categories and keep going through them. Make a big list of all the problems you've solved and don't like look at it and think, oh, well, you know, that wasn't a big thing. And this is like a psychological thing. Like once you've figured something out, it's really easy to think, oh, everyone knows how to do that. But think about the time when you didn't know how to do that. Um, like, I don't know you didn't know how to connect your printer to the network or you didn't know how to set up a microphone or you didn't know how to um, get lights that you can use for a, a webinar. Like think about, or you didn't know how to make a green screen. Like these all seem easy once you've done them. But if you were struggling with them at one point, I can guarantee there are people struggling with those things now and they'd love to hear it from you. Now the second column, look at problems you are currently working on. So it's the same deal, go through the same categories and look at the problems that you're currently working on. Um, because these are things you're engaged in and so you're probably excited about talking about them. You probably um, have something to say about them because these are current, these are things that are going on right now. And then also go through the list and make a list of problems you would like to solve. Uh, because those problems are the things that you're really excited about. Like that's the future for you. And then what's a really nice thing to do is to go through these and start putting them together, start intersecting them. So I don't know if you were in, uh, some of you remember back in the day when we used to talk about making bundles for Amazon. And a lot of it was all about finding intersects between things. So like we we'd talk about um, like garlic presses. That was like our big thing we'd talk about and it, it, back in the day with like private label and uh, creating bundles of, for Amazon, people would sell garlic presses. And it was like a really popular thing. And everyone was just competing to sell garlic presses. But it's like, you look at garlic presses and you say, well, what can I do differently with a garlic press that will make it stand out from all the other millions of garlic presses on Amazon? Like, what if you theme it around vampires because garlic can kill vampires? So you have like the vampire garlic crusher. Um, like, it's just a fun gimmick. It's a fun idea, but it's an intersect. You intersect vampires with cooking and garlic crushers are like the, the, the middle ground there. Like you could sell it in a little like crypt or coffin or something. Like, find intersects and intersecting is really at the heart of creativity. Um, Edward de Bono has a book uh, where he just kind of gives you two ideas and gives you different ways to intersect those ideas to solve problems. Like he has like random words and he's like find the intersect between random words, find different ways to put those two words together and you'll start solving problems, creating products. Um, so intersects really high on uh, creativity, a really key way to find creativity. So what I suggest doing with the expertise worksheet, fill it out, brainstorm as much as you can, come up with as many ideas as you can, and then start um, intersecting those different ideas together. So like, for example, I put balance, I would like to balance travel and work with children. So I could intersect that perhaps with homeschooling. Okay, how do you homeschool while you're traveling? Um, and maybe I could create like a diary for homeschoolers who are on a trip, um, writing a song or writing a play. Can I intersect that with travel and working with children? Like maybe you could, so like if you were doing KDP, for example, um, you could make a book where people can write a song for each day of a trip. You could do my trip in music. Um, like there's so many ways to sort of just be intersecting these ideas. Um, I said, I'd like to create an optimal diet and health regime for my needs. So I look back at other things I've done and I see like writing a novel. Oh, okay, so maybe I could do a guide for um, people who are writers, like write the writer's um, diet book or recipe book um, and how to sort of plan your meals around your writing time. Like there's a lot of different ways to sort of intersect these ideas. So my challenge to you today is to do your expertise worksheet, 
to go through uh, this. You can, you can fill it out online and then you can actually share it. So there's a share button here. Um, so fill it out and then you can hit the share button and you can actually share this in the group. And I think what I'll do is, um, so when we've run the paid version of Cultivate, uh, when we run this in the past and, and people bought this uh, course, what I did was in the private group, people posted their expertise worksheets and then we all brainstormed together on um, different ideas for things people could do using all their expertise and different ways to intersect those ideas. Like I, there was one lady and I think she um, had like learn French as uh, one of the problems she'd like to solve. And then her, one of her problems solved was like running an Airbnb. And then she got these sort of ideas for like French themed Airbnb experiences. Um, like, I don't know, maybe you do a special dinner or something, um, a French themed dinner for people at your Airbnb. So doing this expertise worksheet, intersecting the ideas can give you a ton of new ideas and focus on intersecting the problems that you've solved because those are things you're confident in that you feel good about with problems you're either currently working on or would like to solve because those are the things you're excited and current on. So try um, mixing and matching those. So I think what I'm gonna do is start a thread in the KDP group. And if you want to, you can share your expertise worksheet in there and maybe we can help you brainstorm some ideas just as a starting point from there. So that's the um, expertise worksheet. Now, what I wanted to talk a little bit more. Oh, OK. Prosperity Home says, how, where do we sign up for Cultivate? So there is a um, Cultivate is still on sale, but I recommend not signing up for it right now, because what we're going to be doing is taking highlights of the course. We're going to be posting them here free on YouTube. So. I would recommend just watching what we're putting out there. Um, we're trying to put out as much free content as we can at the moment, just because we know people are stuck at home. We know that the economy is uncertain. We know that for a lot of people, work is uncertain. And we felt that Cultivate is probably the most helpful course for people who are struggling with employment, um, who aren't quite sure what to do at the moment, who are looking for something new. So we felt Cultivate was the most helpful thing we can actually put out there at the moment. Um, so good news, you don't need to sign up. Uh, we're gonna be posting the videos to YouTube and we're gonna be talking about them in our KDP group. Um, so that's facebook.com slash groups slash Amazon create space um, because we can't change our URL and it was originally a create space group, but it's a KDP group now. Um, cool. So that's the uh, expertise worksheet. So I want to talk about a couple more things with Cultivate. Uh, let me just switch my screen over to my slides. OK, so we talked about the seven skills of successful entrepreneurs. Uh, we talked about the expertise worksheet. Um, Karen says she can't access the worksheet. OK, um, we'll make sure that we have the worksheet available in the group and I'll double check the link uh, when I come off here. Make sure it is in the notes for this YouTube video. So allow about half an hour. Um, yeah, allow about half an hour after the end of this video and I will post uh, a link to the expertise worksheet there. And what I'll do, as I say, I'll set up a thread in the KDP group where you can feel free to share your worksheet if you want to. You don't have to share it, but if you want to, you can share it there um, and get some ideas, advice, thoughts, brainstorming from me and other members of the group. I don't promise to go through all of them. I went with the Cultivate course. Um, I did go through pretty much, I think I went through everyone's expertise worksheet and offered some ideas. Um, I think with this, we might get quite a big response. So I'm not promising to do that this time around. Um, but if I spot anything cool or I, I can help, I will try and do that. I'm also thinking of maybe, and I haven't really thought this through yet, but I'm thinking about maybe doing a live um, Facebook Zoom, uh, so we can, or, or a live Zoom and sharing that to either YouTube or Facebook. Um, if I have some volunteers who would like to talk about their expertise worksheet, um, maybe we could do like a little coaching session or Zoom or something like that. Um, 
I haven't really thought that through yet, but I think that might be a really fun thing to do. So if any of you are interested in sort of coming on a Zoom, chatting with me, um, maybe some sort of informal brainstorming coaching. I, I, I hate saying coaching. I, don't, I, I mean, I do do coaching, but uh, um, but brainstorming. I like brainstorming. That's always fun. Um, so if you feel like doing that, talk to me and, and we'll, we'll, we'll look at doing that. So let's talk a little bit more about Cultivate. Um, so Cultivate is based on kind of a simple idea that I, I started with, which was the acronym P-A-Y, pay. And how do you get paid? Well, you need a product, you need an audience, and you need you. Hey, wow, that's like a magic formula right there. P-A-Y, product, audience, you. Um, and you are at the heart of your brand. Like, I, I think... It's, it, you know, who, who was I watching last night? I was watching someone yesterday and they were talking about, it was either music or writing. And they said, if you create something for other people, it just doesn't work the way, like if, if, it, if your heart is in it, you're gonna create something awesome and it's gonna be unique. It's gonna be about you. Um, it's gonna be authentic. People are going to enjoy it. Um, if you're just trying to write for other people or just create for other people, um, it doesn't always have that spark. I wish I could remember who said it. I literally saw someone say that in an interview yesterday. It was like a famous musician or something. It'll come back to me. Um, but yeah, putting you into whatever you're doing, into your brand, I think is essential. I think it's valuable. And I mean, I, I honestly, that's what I know. I mean, when I started out sort of doing videos, doing stuff like this, I guess it was 2013. Um, oh my gosh, that's like seven years ago now. Um, it was totally based on what I was doing. I was selling on eBay, selling on Amazon, and I've just kept going with whatever I'm interested in, whatever I'm excited about. I tend to put into videos, I tend to put into products. And now here we are with Tangent Templates and KDP um, and Cultivate as well. So I'm sorry, I've got a tail. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, but my dog's tail is like helicoptering around all over the place. Um, so I, I do think putting you into your brand is what will make it very special. So here on my screen, I have some ideas of products, services you guys can offer. And at the heart of them, I've put something called the signature program. And the signature program is really about finding a way to create a product, create something structured out of your abilities, out of your skills, your interests, your expertise, your knowledge, your personality, bundling that up into something you can actually offer to people and monetize. And we have a whole big video tutorial on, in fact, it's probably gonna be multiple videos on how to put together a signature program. But the cool thing with having a signature program is you have all these spin-off things that you can offer as well. Um, you can offer consulting or coaching to people who are part of your signature program. You can offer meetups, events, workshops, maybe online for the time being, um, video classes. So, I mean, your thing may just be knitting. I don't know, maybe you knit poodle fur. Maybe you love poodles, you breed poodles, and you've figured out how to knit out of poodle fur. Um, honey, I don't think you can knit out of Labrador fur. Um, <laughs> and maybe that's your thing. You've put this together. Now you can teach video classes how to knit poodle fur. Um, you can have a meetup group. You can have, um, you can put together soundtracks to knit by. You can make worksheets with patterns. You can sell printables with patterns. You can have a newsletter for your people. You can have the poodle knitting club. Um, you can make a book about it. You can make an app. Oh my gosh, buy, sell my poodle wool online. Where's the best place? Like there's all kinds of things you can do. You can have bookmarks. Um, one of the things we used to give away was, uh, actually I should update it. Um, on Gumroad, I used to offer a list of bookmarks and it was just a bookmark file that you could import into Chrome. And it had all our blue sky tangent um, bookmarks on that. So there's a lot of things you can offer to people. You can make physical products, t-shirts, subscriptions, subscription boxes. You can make accessories to go with your signature program. Like it really is kind of endless what you can do. But the key thing is you have to find your thing first. You have to put together your thing. What are you about? What's your brand about? What are you about? Put those ideas together, start putting together your signature program 
And from there, you have the world to come up with different, um, different products within that. Uh, an organized world says any quick ideas you can offer for organizing tips. Um, honey, hey, come away from the microphone, doggo. <laughs> go that way, go that way, go that way. There she goes. Okay, um, you know, the, the first thing I would say is that there are like a million blogs out there with organizing, with org organizing tips you have to find your own unique spin on it. Now, I'm assuming you've, you've got your brand there, an organized world. Um, it sounds like you kind of already have a bit of a spin, but I would definitely say, make your spin as unique as possible. See, um, Marie Kondo, she was a genius. She had one simple formula at the heart of her thing. Does it spark joy? Holding things up, deciding whether it sparks joy. Your thing can be as simple as one question like Marie Kondo had. Um, Fly Lady, that was another one. She had um, clean your sink before you get started. Like, I love that. Every morning, the first thing you should do is clean your kitchen sink. And I think just your thing can be so simple, but you need something unique. So I would definitely say have a unique thing about organizing. Um, like, I don't know, maybe you decide that people should... Um, or there you go, the organizing genie. I love it. So you could do, maybe you start the day with your wishes. Like, okay, what are my three wishes for the day? Boom, there you go. So um, you could, then you could create a book that says three wishes book, three wishes organizing. Um, what are my three wishes each day? So like day one could be, I'm going to clean, I, my wish for today is a clean bathroom. Um, the dog bed has been washed and sanitized and um, I pick the kids up on time from school, boom. Um, and then people could, so you can make a book where people can write down their three wishes each day and then make a note of what organizing tasks they did. Um, maybe you could create a club, a three wishes club or a genie club where people go and talk, like it could be a Facebook group, it could be um, a forum, it could be a subreddit where people go and talk about their three wishes and everyone compares and gives each other advice and tips. Um, you could probably create like a, a worksheet that you can give away on Gumroad. And in uh, Cultivate, we talk a lot about the difference between having a paid program and having lead magnets. And lead magnets are like free content, free information. This goes back to the inbound marketing, back to the content marketing, um, but giving away free stuff, if it's good, like good free information or free content, like a worksheet can then lead people to go, wow, this person organizing Genie, they know what's up. I wanna hear more from her. I'm gonna pay organizing Genie to teach me a class, or I wanna buy her book, or I wanna go to one of her meetups or one of her classes. Um, that's kind of what a lead magnet is. So put out free stuff um, with your organizing tips and then go on um, to, to, to put out products and services. And here's like a simple idea. So I'm giving you kind of a sneak preview here because I think Isaac talks about this um, in one of the videos later on on signature programs um, and, and putting together membership sites. And this is something he did a few years back with Sid that they, when, when we started homeschooling Sid, our son, he got really into VR education, virtual reality education. Um, and I think this is so cool because Sid could basically go to this website, uh, Felix and Paul Studios, and they had this uh, experience called Nomads. And they talked about different people in the world who live nomadically. And one of those groups of people were sea gypsies. And they live in the Philippines and they live on boats and little houses out at sea. And the children swim, they go down swimming in the sea and fishing and catching fishes. Um, and it was kind of amazing as a VR experience because Sid could feel like he was sat on a boat with the sea gypsies out fishing. Um, so what Isaac was doing is putting together curriculums for homeschool based around VR. Now, the thing is, he's not an educational expert. I mean, he, he helps me partly homeschool the children, um, but he doesn't have formal qualifications. But that's OK, because what he knows about is virtual reality. And there were no curriculums that involved virtual reality uh, when we put this together. I, I, I don't know if there are now. I haven't looked, but I assume there probably aren't that many around now. 
So putting together like a curriculum for VR homeschool, that's like a unique thing. That's a unique spin on homeschool. And if Isaac was filling out his expertise worksheet, that would come about from an intersect between homeschooling, virtual reality, um, put those together. And he has something unique that he can talk about. So you're going to find out more about this in the videos in Cold Fate. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything I have to talk about right now. If you've got any questions, ask them quick uh, before I finish up and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to start releasing the videos. I think we're going to put the first one out tomorrow and that's going to be on finding your story. And I love that one because it leads on from the expertise worksheet. So my recommendation, if you have time today, go and play with the expertise worksheet, fill it out. Um, if you don't want to do it online, um, feel free to print it and like write it out yourself. Um, and I will start a thread in the KDP group and feel free if you want, no pressure to share your expertise worksheet in there. And we'll try and give you some feedback if we can. Um, and so tomorrow we'll launch the video stories, finding your story. Um, then we have videos on analyzing your audience, putting together a product range. Um, gamification is one of my favorites. We have um, making a signature program, building an audience. Uh, Lance says, was the VR homeschooling idea an actual product? No, we, we did not sell that, um, but we put it together as a demo product. Uh, in It's in one of the videos that we'll be putting out to you, um, but it's kind of like a demo project for the sake of this course, but we have done some similar things like this. And there is no reason that it couldn't be a product that you can put together a curriculum like that. You can sell it on Gumroad, you can sell it on KDP. Um, like it's, there's a lot of opportunity there. So we'll put out the story video tomorrow. Um, I don't know if we're going to do a video every day, because I think that might get a bit overwhelming as most of the classes are about an hour long. We may break some videos down into multiple parts, just because I think an hour long video every day is gonna get a bit too much for people. Um, so expect a video every few days. Uh, we'll be talking about them in the KDP group. I'm more than happy to answer questions in the KDP group or feel free to send me a message, send me an email. Hi at Catherine.com will get to me. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about this. I'm really glad we're doing this, that hopefully it is helpful to you guys. Um, hopefully it's inspiring. Um, if you're feeling stressed or worried or anxious right now about being at home, about being quarantined, about job security, hopefully this will give you some hope, some feeling that, okay, I, I'm capable. I've solved all these problems. I have this list of expertise. And again, you don't have to have a PhD. You don't have to have like amazing accomplishments. Just write down anything that you've solved, anything like baking a cake to bathing the dog um, to changing a tire, whatever it is that you have overcome or solved. And the weirder or quirkier it is, great. Yes, do that. Um, write those all down. All right, guys, feel free to message me. Feel free to contact me. Let me know what you think. Um, your feedback is always very, very, very welcome. Um, feel free to talk about this in the KDP group. Um, chat about it. Share it with your friends. Um, I hope also you checked out some of the things we've been posting. Um, I do recommend it's a pin post in the KDP group. Um, I made a social distancing step analysis, trends analysis. Um, that's kind of a, a useful document. It's like a five page ebook document PDF um, that just kind of lists some of the trends and issues that we're dealing with at the moment. So that might give you some inspiration as well. Um, and also, hey, the Isaac's Photoshop course is all online now on this YouTube channel. There's a playlist called Learning Photoshop. And if you would like to learn Photoshop from scratch, you don't need any previous experience, follow Isaac's videos. And in eight lessons, you will go from complete beginner to, hey, I can do some pretty cool things with Photoshop. All right, guys, have a good day. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. Um, it's always a pleasure talking to you. I'm sure we will be doing a live Zoom soon. Let me know how you get on with things. We'll be posting the first video tomorrow on finding your story. All right, have a good weekend, guys. Bye.